I like what I saw today. I like the fact that they're attaching things down. The walls are attached well to the floor. The floor is attached well to the steel frame. So really, it's like links of a chain where you have very strong links, each link being strong. Of course, there is the underlying issue of anchoring. You can build the best wood box on the best steel frame and have it all tied in perfectly. But if you don't have that home anchor down right, you're going to end up with a destroyed home. So I still have underlying concerns that a lot of the manufacturers, they don't install the home on site. They don't anchor the home. They just do the manufacturing of the home. And that's where, you know, things can go awry. So I like what I saw in terms of how they build these houses. They're much better built than they were 30 years ago. And I just think that uh, people need to understand that these homes need to be anchored properly. So in, in the damage surveys that you've done and seen, um, can you comment on, on what you've noticed about mobile homes versus manufactured homes versus stick-built homes in damage? Well, Mother Nature doesn't care about the differences, whether you call it a mobile home or a manufactured home or a modular home. What Mother Nature cares about is how well anchored it is. Yeah, if everything's tied together, the roof to the wall, the wall to the foundation, that's great. But if it's not anchored properly, that's where I've seen time and time again homes rolling, tumbling. You know, it's just not a good situation. So it really boils down to the attachment to the ground rather than how well the box is built. Because the box is built fine, the way I'm looking at it now. Yeah, there's the HUD code, and then there's the IRC code for modular, and those are great codes to follow. And there's, if you build it like that, you're going to have a good box. But again, it's about attaching it. Now, you've even seen instances of site-built homes where the attachment failed. Uh, and the home shifted on its on its foundation, or because of the of, of the attachment. Can you comment on, on on what you've seen for site built, and then how you think what were the weak spots in site built homes? Site built homes have the same problems as manufactured homes in terms of attachments to the ground. Uh, the site built home, you're supposed to have anchor bolts into a slab if you have a slab foundation, but it also needs not in a washer on that bolt, and they also need to be spaced properly. Well, that tends to be a problem because the people who frame the house up are not the people who install the slab. That's a different trade. And they're supposed to put in anchor bolts, the people who pour the slab. Well, they don't know what the framing is going to look like. They don't know what wall is and what a doorway is. So sometimes I go out there and I see an anchor bolt middle of the doorway. They, they didn't know where. They just went ahead and put the bolts in where they thought they would. And so that tends to be a problem. And then when the framers get there and they put up the wall studs, they find that the wall stud is right where that bolt is or near it. And they cannot put a washer or a nut on the thing. So site build homes have the same problems with poor anchor. I see it time and time again. If a site built home is on a pier and beam foundation, it's even worse because those homes are essentially not anchored. So they do not perform well at all in windstorms, tornadoes, hurricanes. They just don't do well. Now, is, is there a concern? Let's say that, that there is a home that is properly anchored that doesn't have the skirting around. Does the skirting have any, any, um, in, any wind protective? Uh, function in, in the wind load of a, of a manufactured house if it's properly anchored? No, skirting does not have any wind resistance or impart any wind resistance to a manufactured home. The skirting is actually the first thing that goes away in the windstorm and then allows wind underneath the home. And if you get the wind strong enough, they can start lifting that home and rolling it. So Having air flowing underneath the home is not good when winds get high. So if it's if it's anchored properly, is is that 
less of an issue, well, well properly anchored home than at, at, a, at, at a set wind speed that's not a catastrophic wind speed, <clears throat> an EF, strong EF3, EF4, EF5, or something is properly anchored. Doesn't mean that debris, being in a debris field isn't going to leave your home undamaged, because obviously debris does a ton of damage to any home, any structure. Um, if it's properly anchored, getting wind underneath it, uh, does that keep it from lifting because it's properly anchored? When you say properly anchored, we have to understand that that has a limit. That limit is depending on the local codes. If it's in an area where you have a 90 mile per hour, three second gust as a baseline, that's at 33 feet, you bring that on down, uh, that's going to be in the 80, 85 mile an hour range. That's all that really installers need to do is to resist three seconds of that wind speed and it can still get labeled properly anchored. You can still have a destroyed home on a properly anchored home. There's, because winds get high, you have flying debris, I preach all the time that your home is only as strong as your neighbors, so you may have the best anchored home in the entire city, but if you're in a neighborhood of poorly built homes, your house is going to get all that debris and knock it down. So, um, in the, going back to, uh, where was my question going to be? Uh, anchoring debris, oh, uh, attachments. Uh, a lot of people are, are tempted to hire outside contractors then to come in and put attachments on carports, Carolina rooms, things like that. Um, is that a problem that you're seeing in, in homes that have had attachments put to them, causing damage when the home itself may have withstood the damage itself? I have seen on countless occasions homes getting, in, manufactured homes getting into trouble when there are attached carports or sunrooms. Because when the carport leaves, it is attached to the roof of a manufactured home, it tears off that roof or part of it. The same for sunrooms. When a sunroom collapses, that's flying debris, breaks windows in the manufactured home, can open up the roof of a manufactured home. And again, once you get that roof compromised, the wind damage can be progressive and take the entire roof off and then water gets in on the inside and destroys everything. So attachment is my second greatest concern. Anchoring being my first greatest concern. Attachments to the home are my second greatest concern. So I, I so are you saying that that kind of knowing from your experience and then seeing the ways that, that you're manufactured Manufacturing is basically on par with most site-built homes as far as manufacturing quality, structure. Uh, that's less of a concern as opposed to the anchoring, the attachments, uh, and, and then being in, in someone else's debris field because they simply didn't do, do their job. <clears throat> well, today's strict HUD requirements uh, make these homes well-built for that particular home. It, again, doesn't talk about anchoring. What it does is say, is this house put together properly? And they are. And you look at it, you see it, how they're all attached. It's inspected by officials who either will accept it or reject it. So you better build these houses. If you're in HUD, you better make sure that they are passing the HUD. With, uh, did you know much about the new anchoring standards that, that apparently are relatively new to the, to the industry? I know of various anchoring systems. There are in-ground systems, there are on-top-of-ground systems, and I know how homes should be anchored. And it depends on the soil conditions, and you have to have a penetrometer to go ahead and measure pull out capacity of that soil. Uh, otherwise, if you just screw in any kind of auger anchor into the ground, you have no idea really what the pull out strength is. And chances are your 
anchor isn't properly installed because you have to have a stabilizer plate that that auger anchor bends towards and comes in contact with, uses it as a bearing plate. Uh, you have to know these things. And so it's not just simply going out to the local hardware store, buying these anchoring systems, putting them in yourself, and there you go. Uh, you have to have, it's, it's a complex process. And it's not something that can be done without doing a salt test. You have to do a salt test. Would, would you suggest an, an experience of with, with using engineers like uh, Mike Martin and others that, that getting an engineering firm involved, getting a, a company that knows what they're doing uh, in, in making sure that your home is properly anchored, that's the way to go as opposed to what, what, what a general installer may, may have the knowledge of? Absolutely. I think it's really imperative to get people who know what they're de doing out there. Uh, Martin certainly was a breath of fresh air for me to see someone who knows these systems backwards and forwards, who knows what proper anchoring is, and can easily spot improper anchoring, and will say so. So I think it's wonderful to have people like him out there that can go out and examine these homes and make sure they're installed correctly. So if someone's living in a manufactured home, they, don't, they, they may or may not know what's underneath. What would you suggest of them for them to do to to get a feel for how safe their their, their structure may be safe? Because I mean they can basically count that on by doing some research on the home itself. But if they don't know what's underneath, what would you suggest that they do to know what's underneath? If you don't know what's underneath your manufactured home, then I would not risk my life staying in one. So you really need to, to know what's there. If you're going to want to ride out a windstorm and you're staking your life on what, something you don't even know. You don't even know if your home's going to be there. So yeah, it's important to have it checked out by somebody who knows what they're doing and at least get to the point where you have a certain level of safety now in this home because it has met the minimum requirements for attachments. So, um, last question. Um, I'm trying to think, think of an audience that will see this. So, it's, if it's a MH insider, it's an MH village, it may be a consumer. Um, so, if someone is, as a consumer, considering a, a mobile manufactured, I'm sorry, a manufactured modular home as an option uh, versus a site. What things overall would you have to keep in mind yeah, as they're looking at that and as they're determining where they're going to put it? You know, I've spent my entire 40-year engineering and meteorology career on preaching my good old motto, which I'll say over and over again, anchor it down or it ain't around. You want to make sure you have the proper attachments. It's the key to site-built houses. It's the key to manufactured housing. It's the key to modular housing. 